Okay, hi. So now let's take a look at this uh, MC10 sample problem on algebra. So for this problem, we want to find how many order pairs of real numbers x and y satisfy the following system of equations. So for the system of equations, usually if you want to find the solutions, you have to like put these two solutions together, right? And then you can either use a substitution or other methods to find out the solutions that can satisfy both of the equations. But you don't want to do that for this problem here because you can take a look at the second one. You can see the equation is going to be a really complicated and it would just be hard to solve, right? And also, the problem is not asking for the solutions. We just want to know how many order pairs satisfy this uh, system, right? Okay, so with that in mind, why don't we consider the graph of both the equations? Because in that case, all these uh, order pairs that can satisfy these uh, two equations will just be the intersections of the two equations. And now we can just take a look at the number of intersections and that will also be the number of solutions that can satisfy this system of equation. Well, for the first one, it's gonna be straightforward because we just have a linear function, x plus y equals a three. And also for this linear function, we can see like both the um, x and the y intercepts are equal to three. Okay, and that will be it. So once we can find the x and the y intercepts, then we can make a graph for this linear function. Okay, but the question is, what about the second one? Well, in the second one here, it seems like we have a quadratic function, but we also have a bunch of absolute values. So first of all, we have the two bars around this entire function, and also we have the absolute value around the x. So what should we do? So if you see any absolute value in your function, um, usually we can first take a look at the function to see what happens if we just don't have any absolute value. And as we are adding the absolute value, we can then just transform the graph based on the absolute value, okay? So why don't we take a look at the standard case? Let's call this to be our g of x. And since we don't need to look at the absolute value, then the g of x will just be x squared minus 2x and minus 3, which will just be a normal quadratic function, right? And if you want to find out like some of the, uh, the properties of this quadratic function, first you can see like the x intercepts will be 3 and minus 1. Right, if we want to factor this, uh, like the expression, so you can see one of the x intercepts is right here, and the other one is right here. Okay, this will be a negative one, and also you may want to find the axis of the symmetry. So, in this case, the axis of the symmetry is equal to one. So, if you want to find this, it will be like here will be the axis of symmetry and also you may want to find out the vertex as well right so for the vertex uh it, we can just plug in x equals one and you can see it should be a negative four so it should be right here one and negative four okay so if you have the vertex and also the x intercepts now this will be a lot of information that you can use to find out the graph for this equation so you can just connect all these points like that Okay, yeah, so it will be a really bad graph here, but let's try to make that uh, better like this. Okay, yeah, so this will be the graph. Okay, all right, so now it looks a little bit better now. Okay, all right, so this will be the standard case where we only have uh, the g of x, right? But now we take, or, and also we can find out this um, y intercept as well to be a negative if you plug in x equals a zero. Okay, all right, so what happened if we put the absolute value around the x? So in this case, we have another one, let's call this the h of x. So let me use another color here. The h of x is equal to x squared minus two multiplied by the absolute value of the x and minus three. 
So here we only put the absolute value on the middle one because for the first one, even if you take the absolute value, it would still just be the same as like this guy, right? So we, we don't have to put the absolute value for the first one. Okay, so in this case, after we put the absolute value, we can see that the h of negative x equals h of x, which means the function is also an even function. So this graph should be symmetric about the y-axis. So in this case, we can actually keep the graph on the right hand side and only use the symmetric to find the graph on the left. OK, so on the left, we should have a graph like this. So these two graphs should be symmetric. OK. All right, so now this will be the graph on the left hand side. And if you just want to combine them together, the graph will be like this. Okay, so this will be the new graph. All right, so now this will be the h of x. And also you can find this point here will be a negative one and negative four, and this will be a negative three, right? So all from the symmetry. Okay, and one last step. We want to find the graph for the um, the other one here, so we take the absolute value on the entire function. So why don't we just call this, uh, like, uh, so I'm running out of the letters. Uh, let's do just the a of x, shall we? So this one here will be the absolute value for the h of x, right? Because now we take the absolute value on the entire function. So in that case, we still have this part. Right, so all this part should be the same as before because they are positive anyways, so we don't have to do anything for those functions. So we can still keep those functions here. But now what happened to the negative values? So for all the negative values, now we want to flip them to above the x-axis because of the absolute value, right? So we can find the one and four, maybe up here. And also we can find the negative one and four here for this, uh, the vertex. And then the graph is gonna be like this. Let me. So this will be the first graph and also for the other part, it will be like this, right? So from the Y intercept and this vertex, we can make the graph like this. Okay, so now we already have the graph for these two functions. So you can see that we have one x intercept, well, one intercept, we have two intercepts, and also we should have another one right here, right? If we extend this uh, line here, okay? So by making the graph, we can see there are three intersections in total. which means we also have three order pairs that satisfy both the system of the equations. Okay, so the answer will be three.